Welcome back. I'm now joined by Stephanie Aspen, a learning support coach at Kennedy Junior High School, Rob Hunt, a language arts teacher at Lincoln Junior High School, and Jackie Fabian, an English One teacher at Naperville North High School. And it's my understanding that all three of you taught one of our Career 203 Equity courses. So I look forward to hearing a little bit more about those courses. And why don't we begin by tell me a little bit about the course you taught, what were some of the primary objectives, and uh, really kind of a little bit more about each of the courses. I'll go ahead and start. Um, so I taught the reality of diversity in our classrooms and the first thing that I wanted to do for the participants was ensure that they um, you know had a basic foundation of different terminology related to diversity, um, talking about cultural responsiveness um, and then we delved into different practices that um, would best be served in the classroom to meet the needs of all of our learners. Great. Um, so I taught a course about creating a safe, welcoming, and inclusive school environment for LGBTQ plus students. And the primary goal there was just to have teachers be thinking about how to create a more welcoming environment. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I actually co-taught the class with my son, who is a transgender advocate. So that was a neat opportunity for us to to, to do that. So. What a cool opportunity. Great. Yeah. Stephanie? Nice. Uh, the course I taught was on implicit biases and for teachers to recognize those implicit biases that we carry in order to improve our teaching practices for the students of color that are in our classrooms. And my main objective was for students to feel obviously welcomed, honored, and valued by their teachers understanding a little bit about a racialized society that we live in. Well, thank you for each of you for your leadership in, in our school district here and helping we, us as a community really understand the importance of inclusion and recognizing the diversity that exists within our schools. Yeah. Um, you talked a little bit about the outcomes you hope to get, mm -hmm. but I want you to talk a little bit, and Ron, maybe we'll start with you because of your unique teaching partner. Yeah. Uh, you know, what motivated you or what, what was your inspiration for wanting to get involved in diversity and inclusion and teaching these courses? Oh, that's, that's a great question, yeah. And uh, he has actually uh, came out as trans several years ago, so it was one of those things where, you know, if you would have asked me five years ago, do I know how to create an inclusive environment for an LGBTQ plus student, I would have said, oh yeah, absolutely. And then the more and more I learned about it, the more I realized I didn't know anything and mm. still don't consider myself an expert. So I definitely enlisted the help of an expert when I was awesome. thinking about yeah. teaching this class. And he's uh, presented at the local and also the national level on this topic to teachers, to educators specifically. Um, so definitely my learning about the topic through him um, got me interested mm. in bringing that to other teachers. And I would have a lot of teachers in my building come to me and say, okay, so we have this student who is, is trans and is asking to be use these pronouns and this name and what do I do? And mm -hmm. my answer was always respect that. You know, but they, there was just such a thirst for knowledge. I thought, oh, this would be a great opportunity to bring that knowledge to anyone who wanted to join the class. Gosh, that's exciting. Thanks. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. My uh, motivation came sort of selfishly, actually. Um, I was participating in a lot of race conversations and how do we address race in our schools and all these other learning communities, but I felt like I wasn't seeing that same uh, conversation happen within Naperville school districts, and so I was yearning for it. Um, so selfishly, I was wanting to participate with my colleagues and see what we could do here at Naperville, so that's why I decided to start the class. Although I will say I was a little hesitant at first because I was almost waiting for an educator of color to take the lead on this. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> it was when I realized as I was um, that it's not just the burden of our educators of color to be educating their white colleagues on white privilege and stereotypes mm -hmm. and implicit biases in the classroom. This is really a job for all of our teachers, mm -hmm. right? All of us need to be doing this and all of us are responsible for creating welcoming, warming, inclusive environments when, in our classrooms. Okay. So I went ahead and created the course. That's great. Jackie, what was your motivation? And, um, you know, as an educator of color, I was kind of at the forefront in my own educational experiences, um, you know, as far as teachers not really recognizing my culture and my background and whatnot when I was a student. Um, um, and so I, I always yearned to talk about my culture and talk mm -hmm. about, you know, the fact that at home, you know, family members spoke Spanish and, um, you know, and then when I, when I worked at Bolingbrook High School, um, I was surrounded by all of this diversity and learned, you know, a lot of best practices and things like that. And so when I came to Naperville, I wanted to bring a lot of that learning and experience to, um, 
to the teachers in this community and it's been really awesome the, the overwhelming positive response that mm -hmm. you know I've received um, in how much teachers want to learn about reaching students of all backgrounds and having conversations about racial literacy and having conversations about you know um, how far our education system has come as far as uh, diversity is concerned but also how far we still have to go. Mm -hmm. So um, so it's been really awesome to have those conversations. So I'm grateful for each of your leadership and just inspired by Thanks. what motivates you. And it's really kind of neat to hear some of what drove you to this was just your own learning and mm -hmm. your own yes. thirst for getting getting better at what you do and getting better in our classrooms. And you think about the courses you teach and you can think about your particular course or just equity, diversity and inclusion courses in general. What What's important for participants to take from the course? What do you hope they walk away with when they leave your course and go back into their own classrooms? What I really loved about the, the final thing that my participants did was they had to target three specific students who they wanted to, um, you know, really work on those particular relationships with. Um, and so students or t participants acknowledged, you know, this is why I want to work with this specific student. And then they talked about what practices they used from the course itself to um, reach that student, have a better relationship. Because my, my class was really, the foundation of it was building those relationships with mm -hmm. those students. Because that's the number one thing, you know, mm -hmm. um, to have a positive educational experience. I thought it was important just to build in those protective factors in the classroom for the LGBTQ plus students because especially at a junior high, I teach sixth grade, a junior high, a lot of them aren't out yet. They don't, mm. they may themselves not know yeah. if they're trans or gay mm -hmm. or questioning or queer. They, they're probably confused. They're not sure what's going on at that point, but they haven't figured that out yet, a lot of them. So to provide that protective factor for anyone in that situation is going to help everyone. I, I, I really like the idea of, of kind of targeting three specific mm -hmm. students and there are mm -hmm. students who are out in junior high and to be able to think of them as people are implementing this. I like that idea, but I also want people to think about the students who aren't, um, yeah. you know, and, and for my course, the students who aren't identified yet. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, similar to Jackie, um, one of the final projects for the participants in my class um, created a racial equity plan. So they were thinking about their role in the district and we had teachers, we had administrators, and thinking about what they could do in order to create a more equitable environment within their role. And uh, so that was definitely one objective and, and something I wanted them to walk away with. Um, but ultimately, I wanted my participants to understand that we live in a very white, community in a white district and I believe um, last time I checked our Illinois State Board of Education there was about 90 percent of our teachers in the district are white mm -hmm. while 40 percent of our mm -hmm. students are a student of color and so that discrepancy right there we know that some of our practices unintentionally advantage our white students mm -hmm. and so I just want to make sure our participants were aware of that from um, all the way from our curriculum to our resources that we use you know to the way that we're instructing and then of course to our implicit biases that we may carry when we have students of color in our class so mm -hmm. um, you know the goal is to co combat those and it really begins with self-awareness so just yeah. um, that was really what I was got going for is being aware and once once we're aware and I don't actually don't think we ever get to a point where we're totally aware and we're like okay here we are but it's more of well a learning and I think journey. for our educators who have been in this community for a longer period mm -hmm. of time we, I've talked often about the significant change we've made in our yeah. student demographics yes. from the year 2000 when about 85 yeah. percent of our student population was Caucasian mm -hmm. to today about 63 mm percent -hmm. that's that's a significant mm -hmm. shift Absolutely. for a community yeah. so I, uh, how about feedback what have you heard from participants in your courses or others who maybe have heard about your course and, and how has that guided you to think about the future mm. uh, informally and formally the feedback has all been very positive and that we mm -hmm. want more learning so the mm -hmm. teachers are Jackie Rob you both talked about this they are hungry for um, learning more about how we can best meet the needs of all of our students in the classroom um, I don't know what about you yeah, um, it's kind of the exact same thing. I, I liked what you said about being self-aware. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the participants in my course, like the very first assignment, um, I had them look at the school data, um, and then their school, uh, their the district data, and then their school data, and mm -hmm. they were very um, surprised to really see all the numbers and the diversity in their building that they probably didn't realize at first. And so, 
they want those opportunities. They want to um, have these conversations. Mm -hmm. And so it's been really great to see um, just how positive um, people have, have been about yeah. these specific topics and not being afraid to talk about the topics yeah. either, which has been really great. Yeah. Yeah. I've had two main requests, one for a class 2.0. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And another one just, you know, encouraging their colleagues and uh, co-workers to, to take the class. Mm -hmm. And I like how all three of our classes really get into the same topic and, and it mm -hmm. would be nice to almost run them together and, and um, talk about that intersectionality. So with, yes. with LGBTQ students, uh, especially transgender students, they are some of our most at risk mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. suicide, for homelessness, for yes. physical and sexual violence, things like that. And once you start getting into that intersectionality part where um, a, a trans woman of color is, you know, incrementally more at risk of certain things. Mm -hmm. So it's it's all interconnected. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Jackie, you mentioned earlier, I think the idea of relationships and, and working yes. with staff to understand the importance of getting to yes. know your students and build those relationships just to understand the needs that those students may have. Mm -hmm. um, opportunity to be reflective. You look back at teaching this course, what's something you learned about yourself as an educator while teaching this course? Mm. Yeah, it was really funny. I, um, I really started to reflect on just how I go about building relationships with students and I was pulling all of these ideas from different sources and also from my own teaching practices and I remembered things that I had done in the past that I hadn't done in a really long time and so I started going back to those particular practices this year. Uh, one of the things that I learned from teaching this course, uh, this was the first time I've ever taught a course, is obviously how much more I have to learn about being an anti-racist teacher. There's just so much out there and I'm continually revising my thinking and it was so beneficial for me to be able to have a group of colleagues to talk through um, these practices and to talk through some of the parts that I'm not sure about. So what I learned is that I have a lot more still to learn. Um, in fact, recently on Twitter I just saw um, someone post that if our anti-racist work is trying to help white teachers understand um, anti-racist work, that's actually white supremacy because we're centering white teachers instead of centering the students in our classroom. And that yeah. is the whole purpose of anti-racist education is to make sure that we are honoring, sustaining their literacies. So again, there's just so much to learn. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Stephanie. Rob? That's interesting, yeah. Um, I, I learned that the, as much as you think you know, there's always so Absolutely. much more that you yeah. can know. Yeah. Um, I also learned that um, I raised a pretty cool kid. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that, that really was amazing to see him in front That's of a cool. class That's of awesome. 25 adults just... Well, maybe yeah. for another episode, we'll hear his feedback yeah. on your instruction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thanks, Stephanie, Rob, and Jackie, for all that you do to support our students. I'd like to thank all of our guests for joining us on this episode of School Scene and for providing a more detailed look at Naperville 203's diversity and inclusion initiatives.